Special thanks to Hiller. May you strike the first blow, preferably before they wake up. Rusty Quill presents Stella Firma. Concentrations of menthol detected. Security alerted. Oh, oh I'm so menthy. Oh, 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 I'm so full of menth. Oh, that smell. Oh. oh, it's so fresh, but in an extremely bad oh. way. Oh, I'm like the bottom of a communal oh. sink full of toothpaste. Oh. Oh, oh, it's like a lemon's been sick on a mint plant. Uh, David, David, have you got some sort of purgative or perhaps some charcoal I can eat? Something to soak up all of this excess menth. Uh, no, I mean, there's not even any slurry in here, just the air is vaguely nutritional. I'll drink, I'll drink the paddle water and flash oh, the my later system. paddle. All right, fine, yeah, drink the later paddle. Oh, full of ideas for later. And also, microbes. Mmm, <laughs> <sighs> that's tainted. That's tainted, tainted water. But yeah. I'm left menthy now, so... Okay, good, and the smell subsided. Mm. But uh, oh, maybe to replace by a worse one. Anyway, uh, that's fine. Um, so, Trexel, I've still been thinking about where these complaints go. Thinking, thinking. David with his thinking cap on. Take off the cap, David. It's raining. No, what? Raining what? Raining life. Take it off and feel the life trickling down your face. With that cap on, you're, you're missing life. With that thinking cap, take it off. Throw it to the corner. Stop using your thinking cap. Never think again. That's what I say. Well, I would put it in the later puddle, but you've drunk it now. Well, um, so I'm just I'm going to have to keep the thinking cap on. And I am still thinking, are these complaints going anywhere? And, and why are we doing this if they're not going anywhere? I've been reading all of these complaints that have been coming through. They've been like yes. big, big problems. Like solar well, flares, melting people. doors, you know. But... How has it got this bad? How are we the last line of defence against, like, things where people are just dying or they're unable to do their jobs? I just... It's a good point. It's a good point, David. Why are we the last line of defence? Well, maybe, David, it's because we are the greatest. You don't need more than one line of defence if the line of defence you have is Trexel Geistman. This seems unlikely. But if we're on the executive track, we'll have to leave expediting at some point, and then who will be the last line of defence? Yes, and then we'll be left defenceless and weak and, and, and shivering in the thrall of our enemies. It can't be allowed. But, but but we can't move on because we'd be in danger. But I have to move on because I'm on the executive track. There should be more lines, David. There should be more lines of defence. Yes. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Well, anyway, look, so th- these have all been really, really big, important things, right? Yes. Well, a lot of them. Uh, some of them are just name gripes, but let well, let's see what the latest one is. Did you is. see uh, if any of the of the, any of the names uh, were picked up? Well, no, there's no feedback. That's the whole thing. I just I, it went up the tube, and now, Whoa. well, that's a good point. If we if we can't even see which of our excellent new nicknames for Wellby Weatherby Weatherboy caught on, then how are we supposed to know if if we're doing our jobs right? How, how are we supposed to know if anything's happening? What if nothing's happening? What if just on the other side of that wall there's just a big fire? There are multiple active fires on the station, and none of them are your business. Uh, Well, we we, we are, I think, in a trash compactor, so it might well be an incinerator sort of somewhere in here. That's Uh, given me a lot to think about, David, a lot to think about. Oh, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. To think about it, I'd have to have a thinking cap, and I chucked it in the corner because of the life rain. Ooh, ooh, enjoying the rain. I'm an executive, an executive brain. (laughs) Right. Okay, well, I'm just going to... Okay. Maybe for now we'll just table the thinking caps. We'll just... I'm going to take my thinking cap off, okay? Like, here it goes. Ooh. For you. There you go. But I'm just putting it on the desk here. Right? Keeping it for later. Giving yourself options. That's that's a good idea, David. You don't want to wall yourself in with options or with an actual room you're building and you've forgotten to put a door in. Yes. Initiating. Oh. Right, anyway, so this complaint is from Tracer P. Zazcage. Uh, what? Tracer P. Zazcage? <gasps> Tracer P. Zazcage? Tracer P. Zazcage. You mean 
the face. Oh, yes, yes, the face. Uh, yes, I uh, love the face, David. I love the face. The face is ace. Okay. Well, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm getting I'm getting all hysterical. Oh, oh the face. We're going to help the face. Oh, right. So Tracy P's as cage. I'm just going to just going to run through this just to, so the pronouns they them. They work in advertising. Their job is the face. What is the face? The face the face is the face. The face of everything. The face of Stella Firma, the face of the company, our, our outward facing visage. Possibly the most celebrated his celebrity in the entire history of Stella Firma. Everyone knows the face. I don't know the face. Have you seen my face backpack? Hang on. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Look at that right. face. That is that sure is a face. And inside it, my face pencil case. Okay, that is also and a face compass. More, and yep. a face space ace. It's a game called Space Ace, but it's branded with the face's face. They are all they are all certainly faces. Uh I mean, hey, look, personally, don't get the appeal, but uh sure, you know. Oh uh, what? You prefer Bathin, do you? Ooh, Bathin versus the face. That's a tough one. <laughs> you think you think Bathin's better than the face, is that what you're saying? Well, uh, all I'm saying is I heard of Bathin well before I heard of the face, so really whose profile is better? Just because you've heard of something, David, or not heard of something, has no implications on its exterior value. You don't know about a lot of things that are great. For example, my great dance skills. You don't know about them, do you? All right, well, let, let's see it. Oh, stop. Okay, I've seen it. No, please. Oh, God, I didn't even know your spine could move like that. Great, isn't it? And you didn't know about that. Yeah. And the face is much like that. The face is like my amazing spine. You didn't know about it, but it's still great. Yeah, let's let's agree that I think the face is like your spine. Anyway, the face has a complaint, which is... What problems could the face have? This one right here. There is an infestation of miniature space cats in all of the bathrooms on my floor. Ah. Uh, the fur fills the room and most importantly blocks the mirror. I cannot <gasps> see my face and touch no. it up before shooting our new commercials. If this will not be fixed, I shall require my long overdue private dressing room. Well, of course, the face should have their own private dressing room. I'm, I'm finding it unconscionable that the face doesn't have one. But the space cats and their fur blocking the face's face from the face place, brackets, the mirror, that's, that's terrible. The face has got to touch up the face. If the face isn't touched up, the face isn't ace. Right. Okay, well... But, no, so here's the thing, right? Yes. So this complaint... Okay. We could solve it in, in, in one of two ways. So we get rid of the miniature space cat. What are miniature space cats? And why are they so furry? Well, you know cats. No. Oh, um, well, you know dogs, remember? Oh, oh, uh, with the knives. Yes, but now remember, we put the knives on. So dogs do not naturally have knives, but you, you've, you've got the basics of a dog. Right, yes. Now, imagine that dog couldn't give a good bored damn about you. Okay. Okay, it's a little bit smaller. It's a little bit sneerier. And okay. If you died, it'd probably only wait a few hours before it started eating the flesh from your bones. That's a cat. So a cat is like a, a small, arrogant, emotionally distant dog. Exactly. Like like a parental figure if they walked on all four legs. Now, you've got that, you've got that, you've got that that image. Yes. That's cats, and that's as cats were on Earth. We did bring cats with us, and they have changed a little bit since then. Okay. So what differentiates a cat from a space cat is the lack of legs and floating. They're sort of like a furry little sausage ball with a face, just sort of hovering around, making little wump wump noises, bumping into things, biting things. They can't scratch anymore. That's good. But, you know, you're just trying to do things. You're trying to, like, heat some slurry or maybe do some paperwork on your turn, and all of a sudden there's a cat there hovering in at the eye line, working its way slowly towards your face, and you know it's going to bite you in the face, and you're making eye contact. You've locked those eyes, and it's like, mm, I'm going to bite you in the face. And you're like, don't bite me in the face. And it's like, what are you going to do about it? And you're like, I'll bat you away. It's like, guess what? If you bat me away, I'm going to bite your face some more. And so you just accept it. You just let it drift in and bite on your face. Right. And they're also extremely fluffy because they don't touch anything anymore. That all sort of builds up and gets all downy. That gets everywhere, gums up machinery, causes deaths, and most importantly, blocks the face's face from the face place. And also bites the face of the face in their face place. <gasps> I haven't even thought about that. If the face gets a face bite, then the face is going to be <gasps> unfaciated. A threat to the face is a threat to everything we stand for. Yes, uh, right. This can't well, be allowed. Purge the cats. Well, uh, well, 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 but 
what the face says at the end, if this is not fixed, I shall require my long overdue private dressing room. Which means that the actual complaint, I think, the secret complaint, the inner complaint, yes. the core, the core of the complaint is the face does not have their own private dressing room. This is a classic cat murderer's dilemma. I am sure this will not be a classic or even a dilemma. Do we kill all of the space cats in order to solve the immediate problem? Or do we allow the space cat problem to build up so much that external forces are forced to fix the problem anyway? Because there is always a chance that we let it build up even more, the powers of the bee do not fix the problem, and it's got worse, and maybe then we're in a situation where the powers of the bee have not fixed the problem and it's got so bad that the face has got bites on their face. Yes. But, and, and, and here's the thing, I don't, so I'm still, I'm still thinking, I'm, actually, no, wait. Oh, oh you popped the cap. thinking cap back on. You thinking know what, in this on. case, the think the face deserves a thinking cap, so I'm going to allow it. Thinking cap back on. So, I am still wondering where these complaints go, right? <sighs> right. But they've, well, that's the, th- that's the thinking cap. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. So back on. Um, but if we want to sort out Tracer B's as Cage's problem... Maybe we just say ram a load of space cats into their uh, into their mirror room, the face place, right? Because then, if it becomes completely clogged up, they will have to get their own private dressing room, which actually solves the problem. So, we, so we, we we don't just let it be and let it build up. We, we make, make the it problem worse. actively worse. Yes, we just funnel all the space cats in Stella Firma into their room, just rabbit it full of bitey sausages. But David, if I was, let's say, let's say, and I'm not saying I have experience of this, but let's say I'm in a high-level disciplinary meeting and someone's saying, Mr. Geisman, so what you're telling me is that you took the most important outward-facing figure in all of Stella Firma, the mm-hmm. face, and then we all stop to applaud for ten mm-hmm. to twenty minutes, and then once, yeah, yeah, exactly, and then once that's done, I say, yes, I, I, I did stuff their room full of space cats, and then they died or exploded or something bad happened, mm-hmm. and then they say, Mister Geisman, why did you do that? That doesn't seem like the kind of questions or answer sessions that somebody on the executive track is is going to be successful with, or. Or they say, why did you do that? And they say, and you say, well, as an executive, I took the initiative. Oh. And with the initiative comes risk. Yes. But you must speculate to accumulate a private dressing room for the face. So speculate I did. And maybe, you know, faces may go down as well as up. That is a risk. Aphorisms detected. Security not built in a day. And then we show them a piece of paperwork and at the bottom in completely unreadable text is an asterisk and then their words, the face may go down as well as up. Exactly. You're all covered. Now, I really like this new approach. We we speculate to accumulate. We accumulate to become copulated. Uh, we become copulated so we've got ruminating um, uh, because all our joints hurt. And our joints hurt because the point is that... Oh, whoa! Trexel! When... When, when did you you get here? Hello, Trexel. On sparkling form as always, I see. Yeah, sparkling form, you idiot. Must you? I'm pretty sure my tone got that across. To be fair, I did think you were just being nice. Shut up, Trexel. We're here to speak with David. I knew it! It's always like this! I, oh, shutting up now. Now, David, do you think this is some sort of game? Well... No. But we're going to all this time and effort on your behalf just for fun. So many dinners ruined. So many floor shows missed. My behalf? Floor shows? What are you talking about? We're putting you on the fast track to the top, David. And doing our best to keep you out of your own way. Planets are going wrong. We fudge the reports. Sales figures shockingly low. We blame market forces. Irritating your line manager so much that she tries to murder you. We apply our influence, and now all of a sudden your one-time murderer becomes your biggest advocate. If she knows what's good for her. And after all that, what do I find? You and this buffoon at the very bottom of the lowliest department, and we are still getting reports that you're questioning things, picking at the system, and not getting on. But I thought you sent us down here. Bored, no. We had you right where we wanted you in sales. 
We had you poised for another promotion. Then all of a sudden, you drive your line manager to murder, and we find out that Imogen has squirreled you away down here to get you away from us. Meddling AI, always getting involved, acting like she runs the place. Yes, yes, thank you. Let's not forget that she also controls the oxygen supply, so can we all just please play nice? Yes, number one. Wonderful. So, David, cards on the table time. We know you're a very unusual clone. None of the usual subservience protocols and even universal permissions, would you believe? Oh, um, no, 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 no. I'm a regular clone. Just a nice, normal clone. You're a freak, David. An abomination. But some abominations have their uses, even if others might not. Why why is everyone looking at me? Do I have something on my shirt? Oh, my wig is on fire! Ah, Oh, shutting up now. I trust that we will have no more issues from you, David. You will play the nice clone. Let us elevate you as we see fit. And once in place, we will let you know what you can do to repay us. Otherwise, maybe we will have to make our own little subservience protocol. And install it. Come number 48, we are done here. Done? Like how done you'll be if you don't play along? I have made that point. The point is made. Everyone gets the point. You don't need to keep making it. I will see you at home. No, come on now. I didn't mean to snap. Number 48, come back and talk to me. Okay, bye. Bye. Unmuted. I must find a way to stop them doing that. Well, you know what, David? Say what you like. I don't like being part of a big, maybe evil plan, but if it gets me where I need to go, I say let's go with it. Subservience protocol. Yeah, well, you know, most clones have... Subservience protocol? Well, yeah, well, how do you think we control the clones? They normally have a subservience protocol to stop them arguing back or doing all the, doing all the things that you do. Now, I will give you a subservience protocol. Screw the board! What? Screw the board! Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. David, yeah. David, Here, David. Are. Here are the walls. Here no, are David, the walls, David, hey, David, hey, David, what are you hey. doing? Hmm? How subservient am I? Right? Come at me, Imogen. Right, come at me like Trexel. Yeah. I'll bounce the bullets off my washboard abs, right? David, Let's what are you do doing? It. No. Seriously, watch it, Buster. I dare you, Imogen. I dare you. Screw the board. Do not test me. There are some protocols I cannot ignore. Give me back my slurry, that's it. I want my slurry back. Stop it, David Seven. This is your final warning. Give me back my pod anyway. I want my pod. I don't want to be down here in this dank pit anymore. Such a shame. I had high hopes for you. Also, Trexel will die now, so that's a bonus. Oh, 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 David, David, what have you done, David? Come on, come on! Oh, 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 oh. Oh, that's... I know that sound anywhere. That's the clicking of an empty ammo belt. You are unimaginably lucky, but I am glad that one of you is not dead. David, David, you nearly got killed there. What are you doing? Well, you know, I'm, I'm always almost killed all the time. But, but, but this, this, this time it was different because my life was threatened, David. We could have been shot there. Anyway, how did... Yes, of course. Look around you, David. Look at all the bullet holes. They spent all the bullets, and they didn't put them back again. See, this is what I'm saying. That could be the kind of complaint that we deal with, but no one's listening. Yeah, if, and actually, hang on a minute. If no one's listening, well, this is what I think of our expeditions. What? What? David, 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 what are you doing? No, gone. Ripped up. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Brief. Remember what Bye-bye happened complaints. last time? I, you know, for understandable reasons, took the brief we were supposed to submit away. We what got are they going to do? for a trial. What are they going to do? Shoot me? Hmm? No one pays any attention. You don't even know where we are. No, that's true. That's true. Well, I suppose we'll just have to wait to see... Oh. David. Hi. Uh, Drexel here. How are you doing? Um, Yes, hello, Drexel. I'm David. What a a wonderful thing you've done there in in tearing up the brief. Now, I will draw your attention to the fact that when we don't submit the brief, the walls start to close in. Oh, yeah? And... We've got no brief to submit, so... Yeah, but those are the rules, aren't they? Don't submit the brief, get crushed by walls. Well, I'm not playing by the rules anymore. This is what I think of their rules. Ah. Ah. Ooh, David, David, David! Ah. Ooh. David, you tore a hole in the wall to the vents. Now that's a swole clone. Get in the vent! Oh, I'm not getting in the vent with you. You're a murderer. You're a mad murderer, and you're going to murder me with your murder hands. Oh, but I thought you were king of the vents. I thought you knew all the way around the vents. You're the little vent postman, aren't you? I, I am the king of the vents. Yeah? Oh, yeah. I see. I see your plan. You're going to have me murdered in here by these walls, and then you're going to take over and be king of the vents yourself. Well, I'm not having it. My vent kingdom is mine. Get out of my way. I'm getting I'm it. <laughs> king of the vents is me. <laughs> right. Let's see where these complaints go. 
Stella Firma is a podcast distributed by Rusty Quill Limited and licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike 4.0 International License. It was created by Tim Meredith and Ben Meredith and produced by Katie Seaton with executive producer Alexander J. Newell. In today's episode, Imogen was played by Imogen Harris. David Seven was played by Ben Meredith. Trexel Geisman was played by Tim Meredith. Number One was played by Amy Dickinson. Number 48 was played by Rachel Meredith. The episode was edited by Maddie Sell and Alexander J. Newell, with music by Samuel D.F. Jones and artwork by Anna Kakan. To subscribe, buy merchandise, or join our Discord server, visit rustyquill.com. Rate and review us online, tweet us at the Rusty Quill, join our Reddit community on r slash rustyquill, visit us on Facebook, or email us via mail at rustyquill.com. May the board preserve and keep you. Hi everyone. Alex here, just letting you know that this episode is sponsored by Euphony and their brand new sci-fi audio drama podcast, Crypto Z. Crypto Z is set in a deeply immersive, fast-paced, futuristic world where ICC agents are risking everything to restore life on the planet. The first season follows Jane Silver, a cryptozoologist who is deployed on a tense mission to track and capture a human-like creature, the mesmerising and menacing Iceman. Prepare to be transported into the wilderness with Jane as she ascends through the Alps and comes face to face with her quarry. This podcast has been created by New York Times bestselling novelist Danielle Trussoni and award-winning filmmaker Hadrian Royan, and it is a whirlwind of action and suspense from episode one. Crypto Z is launching right now, so why not head over and subscribe via your favourite podcatcher? Just search Crypto Z, that's C-R-Y-P-T-O hyphen Z, or follow the link in the show notes to today's episode. Hi everyone, Alex here. I'd just like to take a moment to thank some of our patrons. Alex Aloason, Sam Lydiat, Jessica Conrad, Amanda Whitehouse, Smruthy Maganti, Grayson, Selena Yu, Casey Milheiser, Destiny Catherine, Meg Tumney, Sarah L. Morpin, Nicholas Glover, Kaylee Prusak, Alex, 1000 Beatles in a trench coat, Bletz, Isabel Wilson, Tria Frog, Shannon Clark, Caitlin Borgman, Ripley King, Patreonoid Android, Emma Laser, Sally Milson, HM, Kitty Lace Cosplay, Jacqueline Sheckel, Kim Void, Choptail, Jessica Reddy, Eleanor Corey, L. Holson, Lil Mouse, Lewis Frampton, Joe Allington, Caitlin Cassidy, Kirsten Walker, Sarah Millman, Sadiger, Holly Robinson, King Kale. Thank you all. We really appreciate your support. If you'd like to join them, go to www.patreon.com forward slash rustyquill and take a look at our rewards.